Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Lily Reads. I am really sorry. In the last vlog, the sound was not good. I was rushing to get it up and I didn't have time to play with the sound corrections. I apologize. Hopefully this video, the sound is better. The reason why the sound is bad, I think I need to like get a clip on mic, but I have a voice that carries and is really annoying. Therefore a clip on mic would be a lot. So I have my mic that's connected to the camera. And sometimes I, as you can tell, I, I rarely walk around and vlog. And so the camp, sometimes the mic is far away. And so sometimes the mic is further up, like if I'm in my car or something. And so anyways, I turned up the mic. Hopefully the sound is not bad, but that's not what we're here for today. So we're here to start another reading vlog for the week. Now I do have plans this weekend, so I don't know how much reading I can get in this weekend. So I'm only going to take on three books in this vlog i'm sure you don't care but like usually i try to read about four books a week but i'm only going to take on three and these are the three i'm going to take on i am going to read jamila green ruins everything by Zar zaraka nawaz zaraka nawaz this book don't know anything about this actually i wanted to do a video last year book synopsis that I find kind of intriguing. Like I don't know what they're about, but I bought them and these three books are, would all be in that video. But yeah, I do not know what this book is about, but I am excited to read it. So yeah, Jam Jamila Green ruins everything. Let's see how it goes. I'm excited to read it this week. In March, like I said in my last vlog, I just feel like I'm getting to books that I never thought I would get to. Like I've been putting them off and so I'm excited to read all these books. I remember buying them and being so excited and now it's here. The next book we are going to read is I think a part of a series. It is. Um, we are going to read Elena Fer Ferrante, My Brilliant Friend. Um, I've heard really good things about this book. A lot of people talk about how they get emotional and stuff. But I've never read it, number one, and I don't really know what it's about. So I am excited to get to it. I bought this at a random time a couple years ago. And yeah, my brilliant best friend. The last book we are going to read is I think a romance. Um, it's called The Guy on the Right by Kate Stewart. And un yeah, I don't know what this book is about. I do not know what this book is about. This is just a book that I bought on a whim and yeah we're gonna see what it's about i'm actually really excited to get to it because I, i'm curious about what it's about but yeah the guy on the right i think i'm gonna have a fun reading week with these three books the first book we are going to start is the book i already have my bookmark in it is jamila green ruins everything so i'm going to get started on this and i'm going to come and give some initial thoughts okay peace Hello, you guys. We have our first reading update of the video. By the way, the unhaul is going to be in this video. You probably already know that because the word unhaul is in the title. I'm going to show you guys all of the books that I'm unhauling that I read last year. But before we do that, I want to finish Jamila Green. So I have made it to the 100 page mark of Jamila Green ruins everything and let me tell you what this book is about because this book has a crazy synopsis so we are following this almost 40 year old woman her name is Jamila Green and she has just written a memoir about growing up in the suburbs as a Muslim with conservative parents and she wants this memoir to do well a friend she used to have in high school she put out a book and that book did really well. She got really famous. Um, it was about her. <laughs> she went to the Middle East and she got kidnapped and the US like Navy had to come get her. And so like she just got a lot of fame from it. So Jamila Green wants that as well. So she has started praying. She has started praying to Allah that she can become a New York Times bestseller and get everything that white people have. 
So she does this book signing. The girl from high school is a part of the book signing. And she kind of realizes, okay, she doesn't have the fame that she wants to have. Her book is not going to do well. So she's like, I am going to go to the mosque. I am going to start going to the mosque. And I'm going to start praying and maybe my book will do well. So she goes to the mosque that her husband and daughter go to because her husband and daughter are more a part of Islam than she is. Um, so she goes to this mosque and she meets the imam and his name is Ibrahim. Ibrahim is so basically head over the mosque and Ibra she talks to Ibrahim and she's like, how do I get God to listen to me? How do I get God to listen to my prayers? And Ibrahim don't really know what she's talking about, but he's just like, you got to do some charity. You got to do some charity and you got to give back. So they decide to go do charity and give back to poor people. So they go try to go feed the homeless. When they go feed the homeless, they meet this homeless guy who decides he wants to convert to Islam. So Ibrahim lets, the guy's name's Barkley, he lets this guy, homeless guy named Barkley move in with him. The homeless guy named Barkley steals the money from the mosque from Ibrahim's house and joins this Islamic terrorist organization called the D-I-C-K and <laughs> um it starts off our whole story because Ibrahim kind of gets framed for being a part of the D-I-C-K when he goes to look for Bradley because they actually feel bad for Bradley because this terrorist organization it really has nothing to do with Islam it's using Islam to just be terrorists um, and so they feel bad because they think he's been lured under false pretenses. So they go to the authorities. The authorities think Ibrahim is part of the terrorist organization. And so our main character is trying to get Ibrahim out of the shit. And to get Ibrahim out of the shit, she has to actually join the terrorist organization. And I'm going to stop there. This book is so much fucking fun. The best way to describe this book is like Amelia Bedelia. It's like a dark comedy Amelia Bedelia where like everything that can go bad will go bad. Like things could go normal, but why would it do that? Things are just going to go bad. You have this Amelia Bedelia type character with Jamila Green who is like more cynical than anything and her cynicism gets in the way of her making rational decisions. And every time they go right, it makes sense to them, but then something happens and it shows they should have went left. It's just working really well. And my biggest pet peeve in book, I say this about every pet peeve I have, but a big pet peeve I have in books is where a book is advertised as funny, like in the synopsis, in the, you know, reviews, this is so funny, this is so funny. Then you read the book and like nothing happened that was funny. And you're just like, why is this a comedy? Like when people say things are romantic comedies and it's just romance, there's no comedy in it. This book is actually funny. The scene where they meet the homeless guy, so they wanted to give the homeless guy leftovers. Jamila took leftovers out of her fridge and she was going to give them to the homeless people. And the homeless guy was like, I don't want no fucking leftovers. I really like a nice cup of coffee. And so Jamila's like, okay, let's, oh no, the homeless guy's like, let's go to Starbucks. Y'all can take me to Starbucks. So they go to Starbucks and <laughs> And they all order their lattes and Jamila Green and Ibrahim both realize neither of them have money. Uh, Ibrahim say he don't get paid enough for this shit. And Jamila Green is, um, she left her wallet at home. So the homeless guy has to end up paying for everyone's coffees. Hilarious. Like there's just little things like that. That's so hilarious. I don't want to spoil the book, but there's other moments that are just really, really funny. At times it's satire, it's over the top, it just works. But what also makes this book not just silly is the base of this is this social commentary on obviously our society and how we view minorities, how we how we view Muslims, how, how the government plays a part in how Muslims are viewed in terrorist organizations and this idea of these um, radicalized Muslims overseas and how those, how that come, came to be, you know, everything truly is a conspiracy. And I just like that this book is willing to push the envelope. This book is brave. This book is funny and well-written, but it's also brave at the exact same time. What this book 
is willing to say. And I think this is a perfect book to read during Ramadan. I was already going to read this book. This book was already slated for me to read about a month ago, but it's Ramadan and I'm reading this book. So I'm just like, this is just all just right on time and perfect. But all the characters are so funny because it's not one of those things where the characters do stupid stuff and it's annoying. They do something stupid, but they give you the reason why they're doing the stupid thing. And you can poke holes into everything they're saying, but they say it so convincingly. Like you understand why each of them make the decision they make, but you're just like, now, would you really do that? I don't know. This is setting up for a five star read. I am so surprised this book has not gotten more love because it's absolutely hilarious. And thankfully I'm enjoying it because my copy is signed. Yes, I was so surprised when I opened this book up and I saw the sign. And um, in this book, they were talking about the um the, the Jamila Green in this book she was talking about how she signs books with like a purple gel pen and look the signature is in a purple gel pen and then it has a nice little note about skinny jeans like I just think this is so freaking cute so yes I am going to try to finish this book today but I wanted to tell you I am enjoying this book and after I finish this book we will go do the book on haul and move on to the next book. Okay, peace. Hello, you guys. I am here to give my final thoughts on Jamila Green Ruins Everything. I finished this book last night and I'm just gonna go ahead and give this book five stars. This book completely worked for me. This book was over the top and ridiculous in the best way. A lot of times, a lot of books that try to do this they can become silly, like to the point of like stupidity, but this book has so much heart in it and the characters are so good. And then also weaving this story together is a lot of history about things that happened in Pakistan, things that happened in Iraq and a lot of stuff that happened in the Middle East that America is responsible for. And I thought all of that was so interesting and a lot of stuff I did not know. I loved it. I loved the way things about Islam were woven through the story. This book was actually funny. I chuckled many times and this book reminded me of the bandit queens which i read last year which where you get to the like end of the story and every every character that's ever been in the story just all comes together and it's ridiculous that is the one thing even though i do not like cozy mysteries what I do like about Cozy Mysteries, the one thing is that moment in a Cozy Mystery where like everything gets put on the table and all the characters are ridiculous and the plot is ridiculous. I love that moment in Cozy Mystery where it's allowed to be silly and ridiculous. And this book is that all the way through and it's just so much fun. It was just so much fun. Five out of five stars. I was not expecting to like this as much as I did, but this is one of my favorite books I've read this year. I really, really enjoyed my reading experience. So now we are going to move on to Kate Stewart, the guy on the right. I have no clue what this book is about. I do not even remember buying this book, but I own it, <laughs> but I own it. And we're going to see what it's about. I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of going to try to finish this all today. If not all today, I most of it today because I just have a busy weekend and I don't know how much I'm going to be able to read. So getting a good chunk of the way through this would be great today. But I promised you guys a book haul. So I'm going to meet you guys upstairs and I'm going to tell you guys all the books I am going to be unhauling from my home. Okay, see you then. Hello, you guys. We are in my guest room. My guest room is where everything goes to collect dust all the books that I am not keeping I just put into my guest room till it's time to get them out of my house I don't know how I'm going to get rid of all of these books this time but once I finally film them I'm gonna put in my car I was thinking of taking them to half price books and maybe getting some store credit to buy some books, I do not know. I cannot commit to giving them to you guys because I tried that last time and it just wasn't feasible, like at all. I tried, it was not feasible. 
So I don't know how I'm going to get rid of them, but I'm getting rid of them. So let's get right on into it. Lane Fargo, They Never Learn. This book got three stars. I haven't thought about it since. I enjoyed my reading experience well enough, but I'm never going to revisit it. I do not see myself um, offering, to, offering it to people. And my thriller collection, for some reason, and this is kind of weird, it's the hardest for me to get rid of thrillers. I don't know why. It's really hard for me to get rid of thrillers. So I need to stop that and get rid of them because I do, I want all my thrillers to fit on one shelf, on one shelf in my room. The next thing I'm getting rid of is Finley Donovan Knocks Some Dead. This is what the second book in the Finley Donovan series. I've read the third book, but I read the third book on audio. If for some reason I do read the fourth book, I'll read that on audio too. I did not like the second book. The first book is the only book that I like and I enjoyed it. I still have that on my bookshelf, but I don't need the second book if I don't even think I fully plan on continuing in the series. And if I do continue, it'll be on audio so that can go. Ruth Ware, The Woman in Cabin 10. I, this is why I end up keeping thrillers. I like thrillers that kind of like have a lot of, you know, name to them, a lot of like acclaim, like they're big time thrillers. I like to keep them, but I did not enjoy this book at all. I gave this book two leaning one stars and I have other Ruth Ware books and there's just no reason for me to keep books that I didn't enjoy. You know, because there are a few books I didn't enjoy that I am keeping. So I got to get rid of some. The next thing is The Maid. I do not plan on continuing in this series. And I thought this book was simply just fine. The only reason why I would keep this is because this is going to be a movie. And I like to keep books before, like, they get a movie cover. But... This means nothing to me. That's the thing. You can't keep stuff because you think it'll mean something to other people. You need to keep stuff because it means something to you. Like, everything means something to somebody. So, like, yes, some people, someone's going to want this book. But it's not me. I don't want this book. So it can go. The next book, Brenda Jackson. This was just, like, a romance little bookie, bookie, a little bookie that I read last year. Fine, but, like, do I need to keep it? The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. This made me think, when I pulled this to unhaul, when are we getting a new Tiffany D. Jackson book? When are we getting a new Tiffany D. Jackson book? Tiffany D. Jackson did go a few years giving us, like, back-to-back -back books, so let me let the doll rest. Um, I have a signed copy of this book so I did enjoy this book but I have a signed copy of it and this book came this is the book that I read like physically read but it came fucked up the back is torn there's water damage like I don't know what happened in transit with this but it's time it's time to let her go she was a mess and I already have another copy Next book, Avika and the Hollywood Wives. Read this. This is not a good book. This is not a good book. I would never return to this book. It's from Book of the Month. I just can let it go. The next book that I am going to go ahead, this is a book that I have not read, but I'm going to, the next two books are books I have not read. The Roommate Risk by Talia Hibbert. I thought this was a black on black romance, but it's another swirl romance for Talia Hibbert. And I'm kind of at a place with how many swirl romances do I need to read from Talia Hibbert. And so, and then I've come to realize, I think I love Talia Hibbert. I'm going to read anything Talia Hibbert puts out in the future, but I just think Talia Hibbert should do young adult. I think Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute is the best thing she's ever written. And I just feel no desire. This has always been like something I said I'm going to get to and never do. So at, at this point, let it be. The next one is Seasonal Fears. I am never going to read this. <laughs> I am never going to read this. I read Middle Game, gave Middle Game 3.5 stars, so I enjoyed it well enough. I just do not think I'm going to read the sequel. I know people who have read Middle Game and love Middle Game who haven't read the sequel, so why the fuck would I? It's just one of those things that like it was becoming more stressed than anything else. I have a lot of books, so I, I can't like go over everything. So like the thrillers, for your own good, went back and forth last year if I was going to get rid of it. But now this year, it's gone. Do not care. 
Mary Kubica, the other miss, gone. Didn't like it. Jade City, another book I did not read, but never will either. A Little Hope, read it, didn't like it. A Deadly Inside Scoop. I am unhauling the entire series. Cozy mysteries are not for me. What can I do? Uh, I am unhauling all of my Riley Sagers, I guess. I put these books in. Riley Sager must have pissed me the fuck off. Now I'm questioning it. So I have Home Before Dark and I have The House Across the Lake. This is the thing, Riley Sager always gets me because I'm just like, there is going to be a Riley Sager for me. If you're wondering, Final Girls is my favorite Riley Sager, but I'm not that, you know, over the moon about that book, but it's my favorite Riley Sager. I do not like Lock Every Door. I did not like the one he just put out. I definitely did not like um, the one about them being in the car, Survive the Night. Did not like that. Like, And so I'm just like, I'm going to like these Riley Sagers. No, I'm not. They can go. Next thing I'm going to get rid of is Hidden Pictures by Jason Rekulak. I love the cover, and I remember spending an arm and a leg for this book. $28. But didn't like it. It got too weird. Um, The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I love this cover. I really, really love this cover, but I love so many covers. I don't need to keep this one. That's going to go. Every Vow You Break, this is a bad book. It's crazy how Peter Swanson could give me one of my favorite mysteries with Eight Perfect Murders and then give me this. Bad. One of the worst books I read last year was The Christie Affair. I cannot wait to get rid of this book. Megan Miranda. I Because I hated these two Megan Mirandas, I haven't picked up any Megan Miranda's and Megan Miranda is in that phase of her career right now where she's putting out a book every single year. There's a few authors who are in that phase. Riley Sager's in that phase. Ruth Ware is in that phase. Megan Miranda's in that phase. B.A. Paris is in that phase. Like there's a few like big name um, thriller authors who are putting out books every single year. And I think for Megan Miranda, unlike the rest of the people I just named, I think it's actually working in her favor. I think these are bad. <laughs> and I think her newer stuff is better probably. And so I'm just so jaded because of these books I did not like. But I like that book no one liked. The Last of Vanish. I like that book and everyone else thought it was boring. But I kind of like me a boring thriller. Um, And so I like that. So I'm like, I should reach for Megan Miranda. But the problem was last year... Her book was, I think, about people who go on an island. And that is my least favorite thriller trope. A bunch of people on a vacation together. A bunch of people on an island together, on a troop to trip together, and one person dies. That is my least favorite thing in thrillers. I never like them. I never like them. They're just wordy and boring. Um... So like, and I never care about who's been murdered. So she put out that and I didn't pick it up, but I heard it got pretty fine reviews. And then she's putting out something this year that's kind of up my alley a little. So I say all that to say I'm unhauling this, but that does not mean, unlike Riley Sager, that I'm never going to pick up Megan Miranda again, because I am. I think I'll like Megan Miranda's new, Megan Miranda's newest stuff. Community board. I went out of my way to get this book. That's what's so crazy about this. Yes, I did get it 50% off, so that is great. But I remember really wanting to read this book. But no, it was boring. I still do like the cover. I think this is a fun little cover. Whatever. Uh, another book that I haven't read and won't be reading is Upgrade by Blake Crouch. Have not literally since this book has come out, I have not heard a single person say a good thing about this book and I haven't read the other Blake Crouch book so like why would I read that I keep checking it out from the library and never reading it so I just don't feel this deep need and then I'm at this place where like I gotta get science fiction and fantasy off of my shelf I don't like it <laughs> I do not I, I think I'm more willing to enjoy science fiction more than I'm willing to enjoy fantasy so maybe I would like upgrade, but I'm trying to get those shits off 
Like even like if I really don't think I'm gonna read it, it's done. So let's go with some books I DNF'd. Um, the Paris Apartment. It's so funny. This is one. This book is so bad that I actually want to know how this book ends. I want to know what the fuck happened to her brother or his sister. Her brother. I want to know what happened to her brother. But this book is so bad that I'm not even willing to read it to figure out. Like, I actually want to know the mystery, but the book is so bad, I can't do it. I, like, literally cannot do it. Next thing is Love on the Brain. Another book that I did, did not finish it. So, like, what the hell. A book that I just don't remember anything about. The, an Unwanted Guest. It's one of the... I read it, but, like... I don't remember nothing about it. Don't think I'm ever going to read it again or recommend it or give it out. So I keep it. A Stranger in the House. This thriller is the most nothingness thriller you will ever read. Like it is nothingness. Like literally Sherry Lapina should be a goddamn shame. And no, <laughs> no, it can go. Rachel Hawkins has only written one book I enjoyed and this one ain't it. So Reckless Girls, you're gone. A DNF. The ninth house, you're gone. And now we're getting to the last few books. Jasmine Guillory, this was fine. I didn't hate it. It was fine, but like, don't need to keep it. All her little secrets I did not enjoy. It can go. You made a fool of death with your be beauty. A quick MSA is coming out with a book this year too that I think I'm gonna get my hands on but this one ain't it that's gonna go the atlas six by olivy blake olivy blake this is the copy that I read but I have the uh original indie cover so I don't need to keep this one and I'm not moving forward in the series so I just don't need the traditionally published cover Speaking of books about people who go to an island or a celebration and somebody dies, you're invited. Didn't like it for that reason. Speaking of people go to an island, a cabin, a destination, and somebody dies, the writing retreat. Did not like it. I am up in the air if I even like horror, but I know I didn't like Just Like Home. So I am going to finally get rid of this. I kept this because of the cover. But it's, like I said, it's getting to the point where, like, I like a lot of covers. Like, it's, you don't have to keep every book who you like the cover. The last book I am unhauling is Dial A for Aunties. I unhauled the sequel last year, but now I just can unhaul it all. And those are the books I am going to be unhauling. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. So you got this and these. And these, all of those books will no longer be with me and I can get them out of my guest room. I never come in here. This is my guest room. This is where I keep all my junk. It's so crazy because I already have a collection that is growing of books I plan on unhauling next year. I put them in the closet and I took them out the closet because I knew I need it to show you guys. But anyways, we are going to read. And so, yeah, I don't got no space. Like, I don't got no space. To be honest, I could unhaul some more, to be quite honest with you. I just do not have any space. Like, Killers of a Certain Age, I probably could unhaul. Magpie, I should unhaul because I hated it. So why do I still have it up here? There's some other books up here that I probably should unhaul as well. When I need space, I will. But we'll talk about that in a year's time. But yeah, I'm going to get some work done, then do some reading. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Hello, you guys. I need to come talk to you guys because we have a dilemma. I started reading The Guy on the Right yesterday. I made it to page 74. And last night, I was just like, let me make it to page 100. But I quite literally couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I was like, I cannot read another page of this book. 
Let me tell you what this book is about and then we'll discuss. So in this book, we are following some college students. We have a guy named Theo. Theo broke up with his girlfriend of three years. She ended up uh, cheating on him and having sex with some random guy after she said she was saving herself for him. So they broke up and he's now in college. He has a roommate. He has two roommates. Both of them are on the football team. One of them is like really like, I think his name is Troy. Everyone loves Troy. Everyone wants to date Troy. People try to date Theo just so they can get to Troy. Theo, back to Theo. Theo is a virgin. He doesn't have a girlfriend. He's trying to lose his virginity. He's trying to find someone. He's on the dating apps and all of that. Well, Troy, the roommate on the football team, is like, you know what? Tonight's the night. We are going to get your virginity going. And so at a party, he ends up having sex with this random girl. She's into like BDSM. And he, she, so he's just like, this is a lot. So at the party, he goes to get some air after having sex with her. And he runs into this girl named Lainey. Lainey is on the phone with her boyfriend, breaking up with him because she says he's horrible and all this stuff. So they get to talking at this party and they decide to keep their identities anonymous just so they can get all their like emotions out. And there's no like repercussions, repercussions. And so they meet back up again and realize like hey you know what we actually can be friends so they start being friends and this is like this dual pov underdog romance story between theo and laney laney is a senior so theo's a junior laney is a senior at this college she lives with her mom because she's from the town um and she got abandoned by her dad her dad abandoned her went to go be an executive in houston has this big ass like job like he's doing well for himself and kind of has like left them to their themselves. Her mom is really protective of her and wants her to find love because Lainey is a bit like runs through niggas. She's miss, she's miss niggas. She runs through men because reasons. Um, and that's what's going on. Basically she has commitment. Lainey has commitment issues and that's what I got to want to pay 74. This book is just corny. I don't know what else to say. This book is just corny. I read the synopsis last night and something in the synopsis is going to happen that is like curious to me. Maybe I'll like it from that point because I am just in the setup, but it's Lainey. I actually don't mind the Theodore chapters. It's the Lainey chapter. Lainey is so... She's so a specific type of love interest that I hate. She's like that hyper, like independent, but kind of rude. I'll beat up anybody. I'll stand up to anybody. I work 40 jobs. Um, Just like having a grudge, a chip on her shoulder, like white woman love interest that I do not like. Like she's always out to prove something to somebody. And it's just corny. She's just corny. She thinks she's funny. She's like one of she's like one of the like guys girls. That's what she is. She's like a very much guys girls type of person. Like she can drink with the best of them. She can brawl with the best of them. She's not scared of no dude. And it's just corny and it's just cheesy. So her chapters really take me out of the book because I don't like them. So I want to DNF it. <laughs> I want to DNF it. But like I said, in the synopsis, there's something that they said is going to happen that I'm like, ooh, that's kind of a, that's kind of interesting. So I think I'm going to keep going. I think I'm going to give it to page 150. So I'm going to read 80 more pages. And if I don't like it by then, we DNF. And that's just what this book is. Okay. Because I don't want to DNF every single book that starts off sucky, right? That's never been me. But also, I have so many books I want to read. And it's just really hard for me to want to keep reading a book I already am not into. I'm not going to keep it on my book. So I could just read other books, you know? That's kind of my thing this year. I just want to read. I want five-star reads. I want five-star reads, four-star reads. Like, keep me in it. And this isn't. So we'll see. Anyways, guys, we are dealing with a grand opening and grand closing. Remember in the last clip where I was like, 
oh, I'm gonna read it. Oh, I'm gonna read to like page 150 and see how I feel about this book. I'm on the same page. I just have not read in days. I just have not read in days. Um, this book is like, you know, an obstacle. Either you can go like over it or under it or through it. And I'm choosing to go over. I don't want to go through it. Like I'm thinking about the next book I want to read. Like, and I'm telling myself the reason why I haven't been reading, cause I'm telling myself, you got to go through it. Can you read this book and you can move on to the next book. And so I've just not been reading anything cause I don't want to read this book. So I think I'm going to go ahead and DNF this book. And maybe if I ever, I need to go on Goodreads. Let me look at the Goodreads. Let's go over to the Goodreads. And let me see what this, but this book is the type of book that people would like on Goodreads, you know, not questioning nobody's taste or nothing, but this is the type of book that people would like. See, I'm right. As a 4.0 with 2000 readers, which is not the mo like a bunch of of reviews, but it has 16,000 ratings. So a lot of people have read this book and it has four stars. Does that make me curious? I'm DNFing. I'm DNFing. Maybe one day I might get back to it. It's like, let's say it's a soft DNF. It's a soft DNF. I'm still going to keep it out for the remainder of March. Now, once I move on from March and I put this, I get like, I'm out of March. If I don't read this in March, basically is what I'm saying. I'm not reading it at all. I am not reading it at all. I'm going to be officially done with it, but I am DNFing it for this video. I do not want to read it. So we are going to move on to my brilliant friend because I couldn't do it. Like I haven't been wanting to pick it up. Like nothing is making me continue. Maybe tomorrow I might, no, I'm lying to you guys. I'm literally telling you lies, like lying to you as if you guys can come beat me up. I don't know. This just... I don't want to be in Lainey's head, but the plot, it just, it shouldn't take 74 pages to get into a romance plot. Boom. I'm going to say it. This book just, I think had too much build up and 75 pages in to a 340 page story. And it's a romance. I just don't think we still need to be building up the plot. Can we like start to get into it? And we wasn't into it yet. And I was bored. So I say that to say I'm moving on. Okay. Peace. Hello, you guys. I am here to give first and final thoughts on my brilliant friend by Elena Ferrante. So I need to like tell you guys what this book is about. So in this book, we have been dropped in Italy in 1950s. We are in Italy in the 1950s and we are following this neighborhood. You have this neighborhood where these two girls grow up. This neighborhood is violent. This neighborhood has secrets. This neighborhood has lies. This neighborhood is poorly educated. There's not much money running through this Italian neighborhood, but we meet Elena and Lila. Well, let me start the story off. Actually, this woman named Lila has gone missing in the future. So Elena is talking to Lila's son and he says that he hasn't seen his mother. And Elena is just like, I know why she left. She always told me she wanted to be invisible one day or just drop off the face of the earth, earth and nothing be left of her. And so almost, you know, in spite of Lila running away and Lila trying to be invisible, Elena decides to tell Lila's story and talk about her friend. So this is a story of Elena going and telling us the story of her friendship with Lila as they were kids. We only follow Elena and Lila through this specific period of time in this book, I guess. I don't know what's happening in the other books, but you're only seeing them really as they become of age. And then you the story kind of ends. So Lila, her family is shoemakers. They make, make their money in shoes. And Elena, her family, what the hell does Elena's family do? They do something else. They don't do nothing like in that way. 
and basically both of Elena and Lila go to school together. Uh, Lila shows in school that she's like really, really smart. She's really, really smart. She's always ahead of everyone. Everyone thinks she's going to do amazing things. And uh, Elena quickly wants to be like Lila. She deeply wants to impress Lila. So eventually she becomes friends with Lila and they start pushing each other, you know, to be better and their friendship just blossoms and you follow them throughout like all of their years. Eventually, uh, Lila would have to drop out of school to go help her family make shoes and Elena would continue in school and this kind of is where their paths like diverge. They've always been like on the same path, you know, Elena a little bit ahead. I mean, Lila a little bit ahead, Elena following after her, but this is where like they would diverge. Um, and basically this is about both of them having these dreams to kind of get out of this, like this place that they live, but things, they keep having setbacks. They keep having things that keep happening to them. And at the same time, you have this idea of Italy trying to become prosperous, women getting more freedom, education being something that's widely available to everyone. It's just this changing landscape of Italy and poor people in Italy that this book is following. I'm going to go ahead and give this book four out of five stars. I thought this book was so well done. I think what I enjoyed the most about this book was that this book, um, this book, it showed the relationship between two young girls so well nothing about their relationship was like catty you know sometimes I feel like when people show young girls the relationship gets to be kind of like catty and like silly and they get jealous of one another but what I loved about this book because this book is told in the future by Elena Elena is able to discuss her emotions and why she felt certain ways in that time that really add some levity to the situation as well as make the situations more effective. Like you see, for example, there's a moment where Elena gets to go off to school, off to middle school, and Lila tries to get her to break her curfew just so her parents would kick her out of school. And because Lila couldn't go to school. And like, if that was told in a certain way, you would see Lila a certain way. You would see her as like this evil girl. But because Elena is telling this story in past tense, you get more insights from Elena. And like, you get to understand more of who Lila was. That wasn't Lila's character. Lila was just not this like horrible bitchy girl. She just, you know, wanted to be able to go to school and she wanted to be the best. And that was this thing, like this idea of jealousy, these two girls growing up at the same time and looking at each other. And I just thought there was something so real about the way these girls saw one another. Another thing I like, I love when people use the backdrop that a book is in. So in this uh, uh, case, what, they're in Naples? Yeah, they're in Naples. Um, using that to tell their story. So half of the story and what happens with our characters has to do with the way that the violence is depicted on the page, the way that these two uh, characters have to deal with all the violence around them. Lila's dad throws her out a window. Lila's dad throws her out a window. And like, it's those moments that really matter. It's less, it, it's about what people say to one another, of course, but you understand why people say certain things to one another when you see the violence that all of them have gone through. Like, for example, them being smart and going to school. They, When they were in elementary school, they were getting higher marks than the boys in school. And the boys were throwing rocks at them from the bus stop. And there's a passage where Elena says it almost was like Lila wanted them to throw the rocks or like, she didn't care that they were thrown there. And like, that's like commentary on how Lila perceived herself getting an education over these boys and how she was starting to see men, even Lila's families, their shoemakers, that plays into Lila's upward mobility and where Lila chooses to, um, 
which Lila chooses to invest in, you have communism rearing its head and like Lila learning that maybe the way of the world is not the way the world should be. Lila has a deep distrust of people and of men and that really, really matters. The title of this um, book, My Brilliant Friend, when that actually comes up in the book, it's so well done. Like, it's so well done. I'm not going to spoil it, but like, it's so well done. And the reason why one character says that to another character, it was a little emotional. You guys know I love stories about women and, you know, women uplifting each other and seeing in one another what other people don't see in them. And so this book really, it really did that. Um, this book doesn't have any huge like moments. So I could see this book being boring for some because it's not this huge like plot heavy or maybe event heavy type of book. You literally are just hearing a story about Elena and Lila growing up in poverty in Naples. And there's really no moment where the story flips back to the modern day except for in the beginning so like this is just the story um but you guys know I'm a characters girly I love characters and I love characters here I love interesting characters being in interesting moments that's my favorite thing in a book give me compelling characters in an interesting time and I eat it up and I can excuse that maybe there's no plot or I just don't simply want a plot. I don't necessarily want anything amazing to happen with Lila and Elena. That wasn't the story that was to be told. Um, the only reason why it loses a star, this book didn't have any real deep emotional moments for me. I know some other people, it has had those moments. It didn't have those moments for me. I never had a moment where it's just like, whoa like this is just like my heart I didn't get that and I think that's because maybe I wasn't Elena and Lila I wasn't emotionally drawn to the story in some ways like maybe I wasn't in it as much as I should be have been in it or maybe as I expected to be in it and I think that's why it loses a star this is not my favorite book of the year but at no point did I want to stop reading it and no point did I find it boring? I read the last like 10 pages of this book like four times to really understand what they were trying to say. And that shows you I wasn't in a rush to finish it. You know, I was just like sitting with the story. It's one of those stories you just like sit with. And I was just like, huh. It kind of reminds me of Heaven and Earth Grocery Store in that way where it's just like, huh, I see what you did there. But like, is this my favorite book of all time? No. But would I pick up a sequel? What is the sequel? What's the name of the sequel? Uh, I don't know what the name of the sequel is. This is book one, though. It's book one in its childhood and adolescence. So are we following them in the next book into adulthood? Yeah, I'll pick up the sequel. <laughs> sure, yeah, I'll pick up a sequel. Now that you say it that way, like, if it's following them as they're getting older, then sure. Then sure, why not? Anyways, I will come back and I will wrap this video up and yeah, peace. Hello, you guys. I am here to wrap up the video. So I do not see this video as a fail. I read two books that I really, really enjoyed. I read one book, which is one of my favorite books of the year. That is Jamila Green Ruins Everything. I think everyone should go pick up this book. I think this book is underrated. I think more people should be talking about this book. I think this book should have been nominated for a woman's prize or uh, something because that's how good this book is. I said it reminded me of the Bandit Queens um, because it did. I really enjoyed everything about this book. This was a five-star read through and through. Enjoyed this book. Best book I read in this video. And then I found a book that I want to continue in the series with. And that is My Brilliant Friend by Alina Fronte. I enjoyed this book. This book is a slow read. And the journey is the destination. There are not these huge plot points. But I think 
what this book really is a is a master class in writing a master class in characters and setting and how all those things come together to really give you a story you don't need this paint by numbers plot where okay villain hero this this really the setting the characters the dialogue that's what makes the story that's what makes the plot and i really enjoyed it it was nice to kind of slow down my reading and read a slower type of book and i will be continuing in this series the only book that did not work for me in this video was the guy on the right i am going to go ahead and unhaul this book i do not think that I need to hold on to this book because I decided that if I am going to pick this book up again, I would just pick it up on audio. I just don't think it worked for me as a physical book. I just, it was hard for me to stay engaged. I did say that I am going to keep it out before, usually, like I said in this video during my unhaul, when I'm done with a book and know I'm never going to read it like again or like I'm going to get it out of my house, I immediately put it in my guest room closet. But I'm going to leave this on my TBR bookshelf for March. And if I get to it in March, go back to it. I will. If Now, if I don't get to it by March, I ain't going to do it. So it is a, it's a soft DNF. It's a soft DNF because I just don't think this was the time for me. But it definitely won't go back onto this bookshelf unless I've read it. <laughs> unless I've read it, okay? And that's going to be the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys next week for another weekly vlog. Peace.